without further ado, I'm going to pass the floor to Prashan. And let me just say, Prashan is here speaking to us in his individual capacity. He is currently a regional VP, right, and the lead for end user business for Gartner. And we all know Gartner in India. Right. This, all his views that are being shared here are all his own. Just bear that in mind. I'm saying this because of those who have just joined us. All right. Okay. He's responsible for managing existing customers and growing the business within financial services, which he, he has spent many years in, and also from corporates and government segments. And before joining Gartner, Prashan has spent over 18 years with Thomson Reuters that's where I work with Prashan as head of corporates, business, head of solutions for ASEAN, South Asia, including a stint as head of mergers and acquisition. How cool is that? Prashan contributed in several market leading initiatives in, um, in financial services markets from growing the enterprise market risk, FX, you know, transaction platforms. Oh, wow. This is a blast from the past. Enterprise data technology solutions for the market. He also led the acquisition of Omnisys Technologies, which is a market-leading equities execution platform. All these are all ringing bells in my head right now. All right, He's, he has served on several boards of Thomson Reuters entities and RML as well, which is India's earliest AG tech startup. He was a member of AIMAI Governing Council, right, for a good, I think about three years over there, and also in the tax committee. But right now, he's still active in corporate governance and rec affairs committee of CII. Now, apart from holding a degree in Mac Engineering and MBA, Prashant has successfully completed, and that I know, leadership programs from the Stephen Ross School of Business University of Michigan and INSEA. Definitely, when I walk to the other side of the table, uh, Prashant's name is always on my list in terms of future leaders and also a high potential. So today he's going to share with us the secret sauce to creating value. So Prashant, I'm going to stop share shortly and pass the floor to you. Okay, are you ready? Prashant? Yes, Eileen, can you hear me? Very well. Yeah, Very so just give me, so firstly, Eileen, thanks for this introduction. What I'll do is I'll just take a minute to get my presentation in order. Okay. So just okay. bear with me. No worries. Yeah. And please, please tell me when you can see this. Can you see this okay? Yeah, it's coming up. Yep, I see it very well. Okay, so firstly, uh, uh, thanks to you, Eileen, and thanks to Workforce Singapore for giving me this opportunity. It's always exciting to come and talk to uh, uh, people in Singapore. It's a city which is particularly close to my heart. Um, and as you know, on the right side of the screen is, is a dish which is particularly close to my heart. And I'm not going to ask a poll question on how many people like chicken rice, right? Because I know everybody's going to say yes. Uh, so yes, and, and, and so the topic for today's discussion and the context is how to add value in interviews. And I said, let's talk about some of the sources that go into creating that value. Very much like those sauces that you see in that chicken rice dish, you need the right combination to get that flavor, to get that impact uh, for yourself. So moving to the next slide, sorry. Can you see my next slide or? I think it's, it should be coming up. Okay, can you see it now or can you see my? Speaker's view, presenter's no. view. Okay, mm -hmm. got it, got it. Uh, yep. Yeah, it is, it is moving now. Okay, yep, yep, so yep. a very quick, a very quick introduction to myself. So um, I worked in four companies in 25 years. Uh, you know, my, uh, you know, and the companies ranged from uh, uh, Indian financial services giant to a global tech tech startup many years back, and then two large multinationals, uh, you know, with a presence across the world, including in Singapore. Uh, Thomson Reuters is one of them. I spent a lot of time and then Gartner for the last two years. Uh, most of you are familiar with both those companies. What did I do over these 25 years? I did, I did investment banking, so raising money for people uh, and companies. Uh, I spent a lot of time and, you know, making sure the markets were transformed using financial markets technology. 
Uh, I dabbled into an area I had no idea of uh, for a few years called as tax technology uh, and, and grew and set up the business. And, and last but not the least, right now, uh, a lot of my focus uh, of me and my team is providing technology advisory uh, to a large number of institutions, including you know, what I just mentioned, digital transformation is a top agenda. I've been incredibly lucky, I would say, to have the benefit of doing three broad types of roles. One is commercial revenue sales driven roles, either as an individual performer or as a, as a leader of, of a team. Uh, I had an interesting stint to do run mergers and acquisitions, uh, which, which is really all around going out and acquiring uh, certain sets of companies based on our strategy. And of course, I spent some time, uh, you know, dabbling, uh, sorry, not dabbling, but really doing uh, you know, marketing as an additional responsibility. My career is really based in two cities, Mumbai and India. Uh, and I spent a few years in Singapore. A couple of things that I'm really passionate about are, you know, building a business and second is developing people. Uh, and, and one disclaimer, I'm, I'm sure Eileen, you've said this at least twice now, but I say this again, a anything that I say here, uh, I'm saying this in my personal capacity as, as, as somebody who's been uh, has had some experiences to share and, and do not so represent. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Eileen. I do not represent the views of my present or past employers, right? So good. So let's uh, let's let's get started. So what are the elements of value? So before we before we kind of get into this, Eileen, could we just run the poll, if it's possible yes. now? Yeah. Yes, we can. We can. And um, just my foo is everyone hearing Prashan? Okay, I I can hear him. I think he's fine. And um, okay, yeah. Okay, someone say a little bit soft. So you okay. might put, put your mic a bit closer to, to you. I, I will, I will, I, I will speak a bit louder. I'm usually soft spoken, Eileen, so. I know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange. It's so ironic that, <laughs> that you mentioned it. I'm such a humble person. <laughs> Just kidding. This is how we work, you know, for everyone. Uh, information. Yep. Uh, Prashant, I've just launched. Good. Poll. Fantastic. It's kind of the scoreboard is ticking now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's like a lot of, like I said, there's, <laughs> there's over 250 of you here, you know, um, and we've got uh, close to 50% of you have voted already. Wow. That's quite a huge number. Can you see where everybody is tending to? I love Absolutely. it. <laughs> wow, this is great. Hey, uh, we've got another, we've got a few more. Well, I mean, close to 200 of you have, coming close to 200 of you have voted. What about the rest, right? What about the rest? What do you think? What do companies value the most? I think the keyword is the most, right? And uh, Prashant so kindly can just drill down to, to four. Competency, did I just do this? That's like eight. Okay, sorry, four. <laughs> competency, motivation, attitude, uh, and impact. Okay, I think we have over 200 already. Is yeah, it okay? I, think I close, yes, I close yes, the, yes, I think so. the, the poll? All right, thank yeah, you. Yeah. So I, I see some last minute, you know. Okay, close the poll, all right? All right, so 214 of you have voted. I'm going to share the results. That's what you see on screen, okay? Over to you, um, Prashant. Interesting, isn't it? It is, it is it is very interesting and, uh, hey. and, and it's interesting to know that most people really feel attitude Hello. is, is what I somebody on the call or yeah in the office huh? ah wait 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 hold on I'm, I'm I'm muting everyone and so Prashan you're gonna uh, um you have to unmute yourself again okay got it oh yeah you are muted <laughs> okay good so so this is an interesting poll result right i'm not entirely surprising i mean that people people think that attitude is most valued and, and it's and second is competency yeah. uh, but it'll be interesting to see as we go through this uh, uh your know, session have, have we changed certain opinions uh and i'll get a different perspective so so let me get started uh nice if you can close the poll yeah so the, 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 four, the, the four elements of value, uh, you know, the way I look at it is, as I said with you, said, said to you earlier, it's, 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 it's the secret sources combined together, right? So the first one I, I look, you know, I think is very critical is competency. Mm -hmm. and, and they're in no particular order, by the way. The second one is, you know, the impact you've made so far as you get into interview, what have you done in terms of impact and your potential to make an impact? That's, that's critical. 
The third is, of course, attitude, the number one guess from everybody on this call. Uh, and the last piece is motivation. And I want to speak a bit about that as well. So let's go one by one. Okay, the slides aren't moving now, Eileen. So, thanks. Okay. It's interesting to see we've got, yeah, I can see your next slide now. Okay, can you see this now? Okay, got it, got it, yeah. So competencies. Uh, So, so, so competencies are something that I refer to as uh, as things that we're very good at, right? And, and when you talk about somebody's competency, that's what you kind of normally refer to. Uh, just pardon me, my internet is a bit unstable, so I might need to switch. Uh, so, for example, commercial acumen is a competency. Your leadership of tools is a competency. So, it might be one thing which is very important is the relevance of the competency to the job and the context that you are going into. Right. So, so let me give you an example. Say, say for example, uh, you know, you might be very strong with that. Yeah, his voice is breaking um, and is intermittent. I think Prashant is still there. Probably. And you're applying for a sales role. Right. Can you hear me now, Eileen? Yeah, Prashant, I think you broke away at the point when you say, say you are good at... Okay, okay. So I'll kind of apologize for this. This is not... Uh-oh, echo. Control right now. So, so when I... Is there a challenge again? Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, the choppiness, the choppiness is... Yeah, it's very choppy. I think a lot of people also get that. Is, uh, you, is this better? Is this better now? This is I've good. Switched networks. I've switched networks. Let's see how this goes. So, so sorry about this, everyone. Um, internet uh oh, fall off sometimes. Uh, for, for team, uh, the most relevant. Ah, but okay. You've Someone got to demonstrate. Roshan, maybe you turn off your your, your video. And see whether you're, no, you're strong analytics. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe I'll turn off my video. Is this better now? Yeah. Amazing. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Let's, let's push on, yeah. So say you're so, something. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Eileen. Were you saying something, Eileen? I was trying to pass it over to you to say yeah, sure. you were you yeah. were because you 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 haven't completed your example of the guy. Yeah. Exactly. So so the so the example that I wanted to give is suppose you uh, if you believe you have strong analytical capability and you're applying for the sales role, right? And and one of the things to consider is is analytical capability the most essential competency for a sales role? Perhaps not. Uh, and therefore, if you still believe it's one of your top three competencies, it's important to know how have you used it to drive sales growth? Have you used it to analyze a territory better? Have you used it to prioritize your pipeline? Have you used it to prioritize how to upsell to certain customers? And therefore, the first important point is relevance, right? So that, that's, that's absolutely critical getting into an interview. Second is uh, prioritize the top three uh, competencies which are relevant to the role, right? And, and, and understand, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. The, the, I think the third most important thing to can really consider is not just the fact that you have a competency in a certain area, but how have you leveraged it in your experience to date? And being able to be confidently articulating that whilst you're going through the interview process itself. So I think those are the two or three kind of important things that I, I think are very important. Relevance, prioritization, and then you know, being, being very clear about, about how those have been leveraged. Now, if you see the two pictures at the, the top left and, and top right and the bottom of the screen, you know, at the top the bottom yep. of the screen is uh, this, ama this amazing picture of uh, you know a little girl uh, walking on a on a thin rope, you know, balancing. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is very common at village fairs in India. Uh, and it is also very risky because there's there's a risk of injury and and people falling off. On the top right. You 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 see the you know the person who's 
probably repairing a high voltage power line somewhere, right? Yeah. And, 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 and they both have to, you know, necessarily apply the same skills, which is of, you know, real tight balance, focus, concentration, right? So you get the skill right at the left. I mean, again, this is, a, this is just to give you an example, you still right at the left. Uh, just being proficient at walking on a tight road alone is what does it help you become? It, it certainly helps you. One of the jobs that you can certainly do is be be a high mm. voltage repair person, so to speak. But I'll, as, as we come to attitudes and other things that we go through the thing, you also realize that the competency alone is not important because the little girl has many choices. And it's not just about becoming the, the person who's repairing the you know high voltage power line because as she's walking on that line, there are other things that are at play, her mindset, her focus, her concentration. So, yeah. so that's, that's, that's really the point of having this uh, slide here. Very nice. The second, the, the second important thing is impact and potential, right? So, so what, what is very important to uh, articulate clearly in the interview process is what is the impact that you've made, right? Uh, look at the picture around the goal. A goal is a final result and, 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 and there's points on the table. And, and, and very often when you're in a commercial environment or you're in a sales role, you, what the potential interviewer is looking for is to see how did you come and make a positive revenue impact, right? And, and that needs to be or that needs to come through your answer. That you make is not tangible. It's also intangible, right? Perhaps you landed in a team which was, well, not working together and you managed to get the teams to work together or, or you landed in a team that was dealing with a very serious business problem mm -hmm. and you got them together to solve it, which indirectly led to impact. So be prepared to kind of reflect and see, you know, as you, as you look through your career, irrespective of which stage of your career, your career you are, what is the impact that you've had, uh, which, is, which, 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 is, which is important for you to kind of communicate to the, uh, to the inter interviewer. So, so the important point is, is, is measurable, impact but remember measurable impact could be tangible could also be intangible right and mm -hmm. and happy to give more examples so for example if you're a if you're a if you're a business leader you have to work with teams together uh, as you get into a new organization and and and, and you know you, you you kind of develop that particular organization some mm -hmm. of the important intangible impacts that you might be making is on the culture of that organization the culture of the team um, and as, as you went through the menti.com survey, uh, Eileen, we noted teamwork coming up as a very big. Oh, yeah. Uh, there were few. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. There were quite a few. So, so think of both tangible and intangible. A uh, second key point I want to really make is please use examples, right? Uh, as, as much as possible when you're reaching. Oh. Prashan, you said as much as oh, possible. Prashant, you said as much as possible and then you kind of faded away. Really Yeah. Can you hear me now, Eileen? I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. It's still showing my internet connection is going up and down, but yeah, we'll, we'll make this work. Uh, so, so yes, so, so uh, you could come into an organization that could immediately make an impact on the culture. So don't underestimate the soft examples of what you've done in your role, because interviewers are looking for people who come in and made an impact, which then indirectly and directly leads to business growth. And, and the, the second piece to consider is, you know, what is the potential that you have to make an impact, right? One of my, my, you know, kind of favorite questions is, you know, what is your 30, 60, 90 day plan? Okay, we, we, we get the fact that you have the right competencies. You've really done well in your previous roles. And as you get into this role, what are you expected to achieve? So be prepared to answer that question almost by imagining yourself to be in that role and it's your day one. And you are building a 90 day plan or a 60 day plan or a 180 day plan. And be ready to articulate that as you go through the process. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. yeah. Day sixty day plan as well. Very good. Yeah, and and you know, and, and the picture on the top is is a favorite picture of mine, Eileen. And and for those of you who don't know, this is the Indian women's cricket team, which you know for many many years India has had a very solid men's cricket team, a very successful in the most. But in the last few years, this particular team has really come together. 
talking about and, the and, and and kind of pulled out all stops to the next yeah so, so moving to the next slide Eileen, i'll move fast in interest of uh, you know just making sure the internet doesn't fall through so so the next one is really about attitude right we've all heard about this uh, thing that uh, attitude is all <laughs> thank you thank you vincent and thank you everybody uh, so Eileen, I'll, I'll i'll continue before my mobile also goes away uh, so essentially, as, as I was talking about uh, attitude, you know, we talked about this whole concept of growth mindset and growth mindset means, you know, you, uh, you believe that intelligence can be developed, you have ability to learn uh, from setbacks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people who are interviewing you are looking for that. There's a lot of uh, you know, emphasis also on, you know, being clear and then being important that you're self-aware. Uh, you know, people look for to see whether you're aware about the areas of strength, areas of development. Or one, one important question that I always, you know, when I ask, when we ask candidates about uh, one area of strength, one area of development, and, and if, if it takes a while for the candidate to come up with their area of development, it just means that they haven't really thought through on, on, on their area of development and, and, and that might not communicate the right impression. So just being prepared about uh, what is your area of development, I think is important because that shows that you're self-aware. Uh, the last piece, which is really important is also to demonstrate that you've won in adversity. How have you overcome challenges that you've seen both in your personal or professional life? All of us are here after having overcome several challenges right and and it's very easy to talk about the successes uh and but ignore and and not pay emphasis on how we ourselves have overcome some of the challenges we face so so uh, so sometimes the interview questions could be around give me an example where you faced the challenge at work and how did you overcome it right and and this is an open-ended question but it's very important for us to reflect as part of our preparation and be ready for such kind of questions as we go along. And the last but not the least is, as everybody said, the attitude is very important uh, and, and is a very important value. And, and so the things that are really important here is, is to give examples to make it relatable. Remember the person you're meeting doesn't know you, right? Besides seeing your CV or resume as, as you call it. And therefore giving examples that are relatable does give them a context of how resilient you are uh, and how uh, how you've developed yourself through your various roles. So Eileen, can we move to the next slide, please? Yes, absolutely. And and, and now coming to the, the last of the four, you know, components of value that I, you know, wanted to speak about was motivation, right? And when I talk about motivation, I mean, a potential employer is always keen to, uh, you know, keen to understand uh, what is your motivation? What is your career? What is your purpose, right? And, and what is your motivation? Because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's critical to understand whether what you are trying to aspire for is available in the current job, right? For me, when I am on panels and I'm interviewing that this perhaps is one of the most important questions I'm keen to understand. Why are you here? What is your purpose? What is your career goal? Now let's all face it, right? The bigger purpose of what we want to achieve in life takes time to discover. But what's what's more easier to kind of articulate is our career goal, right? Your career goal could be to you want to make an impact on a certain business in a certain period of time. Your career goal would be that you want to become the number one cloud salesperson in Singapore. That's really defined, you know, very, very defining. And if you're interviewing with one of the cloud companies, I think they love it. Uh, so... So be, be, be clear, be articulate as much as about your career goals uh, as possible. The second most important thing is the why, right? Why, why this company, right? Let's say you're interviewing a Gartner or you're interviewing a Thomson Reuters or any other company, let's say Singtel in Singapore, right? So, so if you're being interviewed, they're very keen to know, they would be very keen to know why this particular company. And, and the second one is why now? And, and I'll give you some suggestions on how you might want to prepare for that question. So, so the motivation question is, 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 is one that is very, very critical to self-reflect on, prepare for. Most people that I, that I kind of end up interviewing and, you know, and, 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 and some of my colleagues will, will say that 
are very comfortable talking about their competencies and, comp and their strengths, uh, and in some cases also how they've handled adversity, but are, are not sometimes very clear about why are they motivated to do the job and why at the company that they're applying to. So just, just pay some emphasis to this and I'll, we'll speak a little bit about that and we'll take questions on that as well. So can we move to the next slide, Eileen? Uh, so the, we, we just have two slides and we'll end and then we can take questions uh, on the call. Uh, the first piece is the preparation for the interview, right? So, so how do you end up going about preparing for this interview? So first is obviously you research the company, everybody researches the company, but a lot of people spend a lot of time on the financial results, what products and services they have, which is, which is good. But I would also pay some attention to what their mission as a company is. What are some of the big values that they stand for, because as you start talking about some of your own personal values, those might resonate with the values that the company stands for. You know, a, a, a good example, I mean, I can give you is, you know, one of the one of the values that I stand very closely for is fairness and equity. And, and one of the, all the companies, in fact, but one particular company I want to name, you know, I worked for had, had in their mission statement, freedom from bias. And you know which company this is, Eileen. Uh, and, and, and so that was very, very important uh, for me. And, and, and I think that was important for the company as well. And it was always valuable as, as I moved various roles in that particular company. The second piece is the job description, right? Most people go through the job description, but the job description also has a lot of material put onto it, right? What's really important to know either from the recruiter or from the interviewer, if you're directly in connect with the interviewer uh, or, or HR at that company is what is it that they're really looking for? What are the top three things that they're looking for to achieve in the role? And what is the context, right? And, and, and the reason is that you want to understand in that particular context at the journey the company is going through, why is that role most important and what are they trying to look for? What kind of a person are they kind of look for in that, in that particular role? Third, Quite simple, most of us do this, this nowadays, LinkedIn is available. You try to understand the interviewer's background so that you have a perspective on what, what background they come from, what are the areas that they are very passionate about, what do they speak about, what have they spoken about in recent times in, in, in public domain. And, and the idea is that this is very useful to uh, you know, kind of build rapport as you go through the interview process. The fourth thing is references, so as much as possible, gain some insight uh, from people who may have worked in the company before and have all know the industry really well uh, and the current state of the industry. And I think that that level of preparation is also very, very useful as you go to the process. And the last but not the least is, you know, use power of examples, right? Use the power of examples effectively because people will appreciate when you give anecdotes and examples and experiences because it just makes your case and your value proposition a lot more relatable. One of the things I, I personally like when I've done interviews in the past, uh, you know, and I'm an advice to people who are going through interviews is write down and prepare, right? Don't, don't, don't believe that you can just think through all the questions and go, back, go into that interview. I would actually request all of you to write down and Write down potential questions, write down things like strengths, values, impact that you've made, areas of development, write it down and reflect on it before you get into the interview process. So Eileen, can we move to the next slide, please? Eileen? Yeah, okay, good. So uh, so on this, on, on this slide is the actual interview itself, right? So first is, Structure your thoughts, uh, you know, you prepared for the interview, as you get into the interview process, structure your thoughts on how you're gonna add value. I mean, almost make your own view of how the flow in the interview will work. And I know this is not controlled by you, but at least, at least create a structure in your mind. Talk about, uh, you know, especially when you get open-ended questions, think about how you're gonna answer them. So if somebody asks you a question, tell me a little bit about yourself, right? Don't try to wing the answer on the spot. As you do your preparation, think of what are you going to tell them about yourself? And also, what is the context in which they're going to ask the question? And then that you can realize when you speak to them 
Uh, of course, nowadays most of the interviews are on Webex and you know Teams, etc. But 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 that's that's an important uh, point to consider. Second is active listening, uh, and when I mean by active listening, you know uh, everybody's hearing, very few people are listening. Uh, and when I say active listening, means don't don't be prepared to answer the question first. Listen to the question carefully, value the question, clarify it if you want to clarify it, especially when you're on a teleconference and give yourself 30 seconds, 60 seconds to respond so that you can gather your thoughts on how you really want to respond to that particular question. The third thing is obviously something that I've pretty much highlighted through this presentation. Please provide examples, right? Examples of where you've succeeded and where you've learned from failures. I do believe uh, all interviewers would like to deal with and engage with people who are authentic who are self-aware and also want to talk about not just their successes and the wonderful things they've done, but also what they've learned from failures and how quickly they've adapted uh, and responded to that. And last but not the least is, is, you know, and this is easier said than done. There is a lot of pressure. You, you're, you're trying to get to the job that you want uh, and you're going through various stages. But, you know, one of the best things that will always help is to remain calm and composed. Imagine that you're having coffee with a friend at a Starbucks and, and almost get yourself into that mood. If you're comfortable, you know, you know, uh, talking much more freely when you're having a cup of coffee, ask for it, order it, have it next to you so that, you know, there is, there is a comfort developed between both you and the interview, interviewer. Uh, and, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's, so th those are the three or four things that I think are quite, quite critical, both from a prep perspective and an interview perspective. So to quickly sum up in the interest of time, Eileen, if you can move to the last slide, please. Yeah, so I just want to say as an executive summary, when you talk about value add, you know, as you saw in the poll, everybody said it's attitude, which is most important. Yes, yes. And there is no right or wrong answer here. As I said, it's, it's contextual. Uh, I would say the four things to look for are your competencies and its relevance. Second is, the impact you've made so far, both tangible, intangible, and your potential to make an impact. The third is your attitude. We spoke about things like growth mindset and self-awareness and learning from failures. And, and the last piece is your motivation, right? What is your purpose? What do you want to come and do over the next two to three years? Because employees are looking for people who will add long-term value to the enterprise. So those are the four uh, summary points. Uh, the second piece, which is important, obviously, is the research that you do. Uh, and, and, and no amount of research is enough, but, but there's a fair optimal amount of research you must do before you get into a interview. And, and this is stating the obvious, but I'll state it anyway. And the last, last but not the least is preparing. Uh, preparation really, really helps you to navigate the interview in a, in, in a cohesive manner. So, and, and, and be prepared to quote and narrate examples. I think that's extremely critical so that those examples can then be relatable uh, to, the, to, the, to the prospective employer. So on that note, uh, I'll, I'll stop here, Eileen, and, and thanks so much for being patient with me, especially through the internet breakdowns <laughs> that I've had. Uh, and sincere apologies again, but I hope this was useful. Very, very useful. I really love the part about doing the research and preparation. And especially on preparation, you know, make sure you find a uh, devil's advocate, you know, find somebody who is, who, who means well, right? Who means well, who only want the best for you, but is prepared to give you the, the, the raw version, you know, it's sort of like they really want to help you and then they can just point out their first impression. Whoa, okay. That's cool. I've got uh, some, some you know, there's a couple of questions that's directed at yourself to help clarify, Prashant. There's one sure. on, um, you know, how do you not compromise yourself when, when you are preparing an answer on the developmental areas, you know, areas that you want to work on to, to improve yourself without compromising, you know, without weakening your whole standing. Um, can you can you be some guidance there, Prashant? What yes. Uh, so so let, let, let me give let me give you a couple of thoughts on that. Uh, and and again, it's it, it's a it's a very interesting subject because uh, early on in your career, you know, as you're early on in your career, you're very focused on highlighting only your strengths. 
yeah. and, and, and and not so much on development areas. But as you as you go through, you realize that the authenticity about highlighting which areas you need development on is important, right? So first, first, don't be fearful, be authentic, right? And and uh, and number one. So so that's number one. So a couple of other points that I will I will mention out here is 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 that it's important to I highlight the area of development. And then one one area to look for is look at what your peers and and and, and your previous bosses or managers you worked with have highlighted to you, uh, and and be authentic about the fact that you know that area of development is shared transparently. But what people are most always looking for, Eileen, in my view, and and the team on the call today is is not the fact that you have an area of development, right? Because most people have. Most people, what all people have areas of development, is is but but it's 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 important to highlight what are you doing about it, right? That's the journey that people want to understand, right? And and it's very important to say yes, I have an area of development. My managers have given me feedback. I've understood it. I've I've got a mentor supporting me. I have seen that over the last year I worked on this, and and my supporters and my Colleagues are giving me feedback that this has significantly improved, or moderate, moderately improved. What are the two things that are most important here? Right, a being authentic and acknowledging that you have an area of development. Mm -hmm. B sharing that you have a plan in place to address it. And 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 C that you've actually done something about it. Everybody has a plan. How many people execute? Right. Oh, I love so, that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So so I think that's 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 really important. But equally, you know, one needs to be cognizant, right? So, if your area of development is is the most critical competency in the job itself, then you are going to face a challenge, and which perhaps might force you to rethink whether the job itself is the right job for you, right? Uh, and an example is, uh, I mean, again, this might be a, a little bit of a vague example, but I'll say this anyway. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm appearing an interview for a sales role, but you say, you know, why my area of development is I I, I don't like prospecting. <laughs> so, <laughs> So you, so, send so imagine, to, you send someone to hunt, but I know you are yeah, very good at farming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're good at farming. So you got to you got to contextualize it for the role, right? Right. And and the reality is, even if you're farming, you're actually hunting, right? You're hunting for new opportunities within an existing account. So if you fundamentally say, actually, I don't like hunting, I only like farming, then you need to be careful about how you contextualize it, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's the that's the, uh, the, the, the that that would be the best analogy that I can give of. Uh, you know, making sure your uh, development areas are articulated well. Okay, so um, I know a lot of people put attitude and all that. Uh, there's there's one other question, but I think let's let's address that when we come to it. Yep. So um, very nice. I think you've got quite a few. Thank you. Uh, and and wow, as you are answering that question, we actually get a little bit more questions coming up as well. But I've taken note of those questions. Why don't um, Okay, so Winkit says thank you because he's the one who asked the question. And then there's, there's, there's another one which I just want to read out and, and get your quick view. Uh, Fionn says that I've done research on the company's background, some staff background, and then two interviewers, one very impressed with the homework that you have done, but the other commented that you're just wasting your time, uh, that she's just wasting or he's just wasting his time and keep putting the candidate down, right? So, so basically there are two, right? Some people are okay for you to, to search them out. Some people are not. And I think that I remember at the last seminar that we held, one of the, um, the HR, global HR director said that she rather people do, uh, you know, search her out. So, so that she knows that, um, that you are really interested. So which site are you on Prashant? So, so I, I, I'm on the side. I'd much rather have somebody who, who, who has researched both the company and, and, and myself. And if, 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 if in the past, when I'm in the process of giving an interview in the past many years back, I would do the, I would do the same as well. And, and, and the reality is, if, if you're on a public platform where you're searchable, then, then it's perfectly okay to search and understand where your background is because you know there are many benefits of doing that. Right? One of the big benefits I find I've found in the past is if you search somebody's profile on LinkedIn, you're almost going to find a common connection, right? Mm. So how, how great is it, is it to start a conversation with, with Eileen saying, you know, hey, Eileen, you know, uh, I, I know 
uh, it's great. Thanks. You know, before we start the interview, I just want to know how do you know X, Y, Z, who might be a very close friend, close ally, close colleague, ex worker, and that instantaneously builds a personal connection between what is otherwise a process where people don't know each other, right? So there are different benefits of that. If if Eileen is passionate about coaching and I have some experience in coaching, I can kind of start the conversation. Being, I hear you're an executive coach. Yeah. Uh, how is that going for you in Singapore, right? For example. So, so there are, you know, the, 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 the whole, whole, the whole, the point that I want to really make is the first five minutes of any human interaction are about building rapport, right? Yeah. Whether you're selling to someone, a company, a product, or service, or whether you are in an interview process, the first five, six minutes from both sides are really about just developing rapport. And in some cases, it's more than that, but at least the first five minutes are about that. So it's important to, Research the companies. Sorry for the long answer, Eileen, but I'm, I want to give the context why I feel it's so important. Yeah. It's, it's very, very good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. I think it's in line with what you said, you know, be authentic and, um, and the practice of writing it down. Because when you write it right. down, then, you know, you can go through your reasoning. And when someone reads your reasoning or even yourself, right, reading that reasoning, when you have written it down, you might want to rephrase things again because things can always be viewed from different perspective. And just, just a point to everybody here, when I first approached Prashan, you know, even though, um, even though, you know, corporate, corporate wise, he's, he's, he's not coming in here to speak on behalf of Gartner, but he did not let that, you know, stop him because inside him, he has a message he wants to share as well. And then he said, look, I, I'm happy to come in here to share my personal views because he spent quite, a few years in Singapore as well. So definitely he's got some, you know, senti sentimental connection. He better have, because that's where I met him, <laughs> you know, while he was in, <laughs> while he's here. Yeah. So that's cool. That's cool. Thank you so much, uh, Prashan. I think there's still a few more questions. If you can also respond to those questions in the chat, it'll be I'll nice. do that. Very nice. We were, Prashan is still with us, everyone. Uh, so we'll still circle back to Prashan later on at the combined uh, Q&A. Uh, can you imagine, wow, there's still more people joining us. So I'm just admitting them. Um, okay, I'm gonna, thank you so much. I'm gonna stop share and then also bring on the next speaker.